All right, so the uh, Nixie relay clock, uh, all done. And actually, the filming is kind of a gloomy day using a natural light. It looks kind of drab, but um, anyway, here's a demo and some thoughts about uh, the project. It's the clock, and I can turn it on, and it does its uh, self-test. comes up 0, 0, 0, counts to um, 23, 59, 59, and then does a test to... to click over and uh, then it sets the time and right now I have I'm in local 24 hour mode so it's uh 447 and 40 or, and it will be 447 and 47 seconds uh when it uh starts the got, got the am pm indicators uh local utc 1224 uh show date show time and what the current um offset is from uh, UTC time. So it's moving along. Um, the way, from the way it sounds, um, I know it's running off the real-time clock. So I can turn it on to uh, UTC time, and I can hit the time button, and it'll show the time. I think it's uh, almost midnight. Yeah, it's almost midnight. And it'll start up again. Um, I can go into... 12 hour mode and hit time and now you see it's uh 11 48 p.m um that's utc time and it clicks along i can switch it over to local time hit the set time and again it adjusts to now it's 4 49 it blanks off the leading zero and it uh, shows the uh, time. I can hit the date. And when I hit the date, it shows today's date, October 30th, 2021. And uh, then it goes and it shows the time again. And so I usually like seeing it in 24-hour uh, mode. So I'll, I'll do that. And we'll see if it picks up the GPS signal uh, inside. I'm, I'm away from Windows, but we'll know because it'll, it'll resync and then the cadence of the uh, seconds will be different. So it's all done. It's ready to go on the shelf someplace, you know, turn it on. Um, the clicking, it's a lot more mellow with the case on. It was kind of loud. Now it's kind of how you'd want it. It sounds, it sounds like a mechanical clock. And so I, I like that. Um, and the, um, the layout of the bezel, uh, and the front panel, it turned out okay. There's a lot of dead space over here. I'm not quite sure what I would have done with that. It was, it was really tricky. You know, it, it's, it's really, really tall. So if I could have done it differently, maybe it would have had, you know, AM, PM over here and the, and the setting of the offset, maybe in the back, if I could squash it down more, but I was really limited on the case. And I'm not crazy with the um, with the boring beige on the case. Maybe if I, I don't know, if I get crazy, I could like paint it like navy blue or black or something. But um, it's fine. It's fine. It's an it's an industrial, you know, quasi fifties fifties punk kind of um, kind of look to it. So and it's retro. So. Maybe that's okay, but it, you know, it does the job. It makes the noises that I want it to make. Um, I'm glad it didn't have all the, you know, hour and minutes and reset and advance and force GPS and GPS status. There's just way too much stuff. I like sort of the simplicity here. I like the mellow glow of um, the Nixie tubes and I like the sound. So it was a, it was a fun project. Like I said, time to put it on the shelf. Um, it had everything you could want in a project. Um, you know, it's, it's somewhat original. I mean, people sell Nixie clocks that run off Arduinos, um, but this had the complexity of the actual counting is done in the relays. And so when I started, I wasn't really sure how it would actually turn out. You know, I wanted to do something with relays. I did a lot of exploration about making the counters. Um, I had to do a set of prototypes. I wasn't sure you know, and I ran into challenges along the way. The, the results, it wasn't guaranteed. I, I knew I'd do it. You know, I'm, I'm a good engineer, but I wasn't, I wasn't, it, it wasn't just a 
you know, step A to step B to step C kind of a thing. There's a lot of exploration, a lot of learning. And so I really, really enjoyed that. I always want to learn something different every project. I always want to be challenged. I always want to run into issues that I have to work through. So, you know, the unreliability of the relays when the voltage was low, you know, that took a while to figure out. Um, getting it to you know, roll over at the same time, getting that timing or just getting the logic worked out. That was, that was a good challenge. And then, you know, working with Illustrator to draw the mock-ups of the, of the PCBs, actually designing the PCBs and then soldering them. That was, that was a big project. Um, and then doing the top control board, you know, I was very, very wary of the software, almost repelled by it. But in the end, I really enjoyed, um, got Visual Studio Code up and running with all the libraries and all the complexity and, you know, got my C syntax back. So I know, you know, what has a colon or a semicolon, if there's a parentheses or squiggly braces, I have all that down now. So it increased my competence in, to be able to um, write code for stuff in the future. And so I had a lot of fun. The software actually was easier and it went way faster than I thought. Basically, I started writing it and it was, it was just kind of done. Um, it all worked, uh, according to plan. Um, I like the rule. I like the rule relay test at the start. Um, I like that it automatically switches between GPS and real time clock when it detects that, um, I, oh, I, I can do my cheat mode. Let's see if it does it. Yeah. Seven, seven, seven. Um, there's seven satellites, uh, offset of seven. So I guess I am on the GPS now. Yeah, sure. I am, I am on the GPS. Okay. Um, now I even, I even forgot with it, how, how the sounds are different if it's GPS or real time clock. Um, but it's really slick. Um, the control panel, I should have made the labels a little bit bigger or, you know, the, um, the writing, the laser was really finely focused. So it's really hard to see. And I should have done, how I did it on the, um, the sound generator where it wasn't just a draw. It did sort of a, a area etch to make those. I didn't think it would be, it would turn out that sharp and that fine. Um, but it's okay. You know, I mean, whatever. Um, um, and then I think, uh, had I been thinking, I would have actually gone through with some paint and filled it in better because again, that black, it's not necessarily supposed to be black. That's just kind of the charring. And, um, I, I washed the, the metal cause I super glued some stuff on the inside. I think I washed out a lot of the stuff that makes it black, but okay. Project for next time, but I really enjoyed the project. It's the funnest thing I've done, you know, during COVID for sure. Uh, most challenging, you know, I spent, started this in June sometime. So it's, it was a four month project. Like I said, 300, 400 hours in it. And mostly in the learning and the experimentation, the screwing around, figuring stuff out, you know, that's what makes it really fun. And that's what makes, made it really enjoyable, um, as a project. And it's going to be hard to find something that's that, you know, challenging, you know, this is, this is, this is sort of a unique thing that I built, um, or, you know, a, a unique to me, did it my way. You know, other people do relay clocks that, you know, count in binary or BCD and they drive stuff. You, you know, this, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't really, really didn't look at what other people did other than those patents for the ring counter. But then I, you know, had to adapt those into this application and I enjoyed, you know, finding the parts and, uh, you know, um, lots of fun. So I guess I'm just droning on about how much fun it was, but it was really enjoyable. And now I have, um, the finished project, uh, f f final product. And, uh, there you go on to the next thing. So, um, thanks for watching and, uh, you know, um, following along as I, uh, did this. All right. Have a good night.